Hello to Zimbabwe, hello Maskera say, Maskera say, Maskera say, a very good evening. Um, I'm sorry, I am quite late. So, um, I'm five minutes late, but um, I hope and believe that uh, we are going to continue um, exposing, because we cannot continue to, to, to speak about politics without pointing out how this government is failing. So before we proceed, uh, can you please confirm if you can hear me? I don't know if you can hear me. Please confirm. So we need to, to, to expose how this government is failing so that we can know where to offer solutions, how to offer solutions, and um, uh, the framework required. So the basic um, concept of failure is failure to understand the basic economics uh, concepts. Uh, that is work of commerce at all level. Those are the issues we need to, 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 to expose because our government is being led by people who doesn't even understand the principles of uh, commerce, all level commerce. They don't understand simple things. Because when we were Form 4, we learned about uh, the factors of production. And uh, th that is very important because our government should uh, uh, make sure that they understand what are the factors of production are. So we, we have land, we have labor, we have capital, we have entrepreneurship. We need to have a government which understands how these four things work. We need a government which understands how to link these things and how to, to make these things uh, create a viable economy. So the functions of the president as the head of state is to make sure that he establishes an economic system and that economic system should organize and distribute the available resources and uh, goods and services to all corners of Zimbabwe, to all sectors of the economy, to all groups of the people in Zimbabwe, whether rich, whether poor, women, young people, um, uh, men, uh, the, those with disabilities, etc., etc. That is the function of the head of state: is to make sure that he establishes a system, and that system should uh, it should be an economic system we, which he established. But it is going to organize and distribute available resources. That is the reason why you see. Uh, President Emerson Nangagwa formed a government, and each and every person who is elected in the head of state, he forms a government. He uh, appoints my cabinet ministers, my permanent secretaries, my head of all my, my organizations and parasitals. That is to create a system which is viable and is working. So we want to, to test whether President Emerson Nangagwa has managed to create uh, those systems to, to, to make sure that those systems are in place. So, uh, please, we, before we, we, we continue, can you please uh, subscribe, uh, like, share, and also, can you please um, tell us if you can hear me through the comment section? Please tell me if you can hear me through the comment section. Your comments are very important here. So our today's duty or assignment is to expose our President Emerson Nangagwa's failure, failing. And to, to, or to ascertain how he's failing, we need to understand basic, th basic things and how they work. And then we see if he is applying um, the right methods to run this government. So um, I, I've been uh, uh, explaining the role of the president uh, in terms of how the economy works. That is to establish an economic system, and that is the government. So. You can actually see that um, the government is supposed to distribute the available resources. And this comes then to, to an issue of the factors of uh, production because uh, the, the, the functions of, of that government is to regulate, is to make sure that there is proper regulation of the factors of production. That is the main aim of the government. It is to regulate the factors of production. And these are land, these are labor, these are capital, these are entrepreneurship. So if we go to land, you can actually see that uh, President Emerson Nangawa has failed to deal with that aspect. Because number one, 
Land in Zimbabwe is in the hands of, of, of the few. Land, commercial land, is in the hands of the few. A lot of people have applied for land, but they are still on the waiting list for years, if not decades. But there are people with thousands of hectares which are underutilized, which are not utilized, which are producing gas. Yet we have uh, the consequences of poverty, of hunger, of continuous importation of uh, the, the required uh, necessary inputs for production. That is wheat, maize, everything, soya, everything is being imported. But we have a vast land in the nation of Zimbabwe. And as the Edo said, he has failed to make sure that there is equal distribution of land. That equal distribution of land was going to, 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 to make sure that there is a maximum production of that land. Because we need to have a policy which deals with the issue to do with full utilization of land. Commercial land must be fully utilized. Rural land must be fully utilized. And there is no such policy. So other people will come and argue and say there is command agriculture. But command agriculture is characterized by corruption, is characterized by looting, is characterized by uh, channeling in billions of dollars. But those billions which are channeled into that command agriculture are failing to produce a corresponding uh, outcome, which means that there is a problem in how this um, command agriculture is being run. It means they have failed to adopt a policy which is going to deal with the issue to do with maximum land utilization. So, apart from uh, uh, the use of, of, uh, of land in terms of agriculture, we have the use of land in terms of mining. How is our mining working? That is very important for us to ask. So you can actually go and see that um, for you to obtain a mining license, it is very difficult. You have to fork a lot of money. There is massive corruption in the Ministry of Mines. Uh, there is, if you go and say, I have seen a place, Yandinodaku Miner, I have found a place, we are going pay grill. It does not surprise you to go there and find somebody else now occupying your, that mine. That is possible and that is happening in the nation of Zimbabwe. And that opens a lot of questions to say, do we have a functional land policy where, number one, agriculture is um, fully implemented and utilized? Secondly, mining is fully implemented and, uh, and utilized. And that question is very, very, very difficult to, 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 to answer if we are to ask uh, the, 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 the team which are in government, because land itself, there is no production um, in terms of land. So you can actually see that uh, they failed uh, to that regard. So you can uh, actually see that um, uh, we have, um, the land is in the hands of the politicians, and these politicians, they are very powerful, and they are no, not willing to relinquish this land to, to uh, redistribute this land to different people or to people with capacity, especially young people uh, with capacity to, to, to do farming. As I always say, if you give me 10 hectares, I can fully utilize 10 hectares. So why not just uh, redistribute land to, to young people, remove 99 year leases, then implement competent leases where I am supposed to, to, to be competent, I am supposed to meet the production targets. That is how you can fully utilize land. Make sure that commercial land is in the hands of capable people, not people from other countries. We are talking about citizens, about young people who are willing to inject money into farming. But if you give me 10 hectares, I'm going to utilize it. And there are thousands, if not millions, of young people who are willing to have 10 hectares and fully utilize that 10 hectares. Only they, they want is land. And they, they can raise capital to do farming. And we will begin to have food poverty um, uh, going to, to, to an end. We are going to have um, a massive importation of things going to an end. 
But this current government has failed to come up with uh, such a, a policy to make sure that there is a full utilization of land. They failed to come up with a policy to make sure that the people who are doing mining are doing it properly. And they are across, the process of mining activities are going to straight to the treasure. They failed to deal with that issue. They have reversed that um, uh, policy of 49 to 51, that indigenization policy, they have reversed it. They are doing all sorts of things to make sure that they reverse all the poor gains of the liberation struggle. So it means that uh, as the government, we are just suffering and we are on our own. So on the issue to do with land, uh, indeed, this government has failed as we have uh, explained. So let's go to the issue to do with capital. So capital is a very, 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 very important because uh, we are referring to money which a company is using to finance growth and capital may take um, the form of economic, uh, economic assets, including cash as well as equity and debt. And let's go and see how our banking sector is functional. Because for us to have um, money, for us to, 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 to be able to, to, have, to take, go and take loans from the banks, we need to have a functional banking system with reasonable interest rates. But in the nation of Zimbabwe, we have seen that we cannot access loans. We have failed to access loans. Reason being, I, I just left university at 22. I have my ideas, but I don't have collateral. How am I going to, 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 to get capital? So that is problematic. But capital is not about uh, money only or about debt only. We have an issue to do with assets. In the nation of Zimbabwe, we have seen that um, the, the, the government of Zimbabwe introduced a system where if you acquire a heavy machinery, uh, I think around 10,000 US dollars and above, you can apply for duty free in, in terms of a, a machinery and equipment. You can apply for duty free importation of such machinery, but you should be 10,000 and above. And this raises a lot of questions, and we are going to touch that issue at a later stage again. But this issue is, I need assets as part of capital. So if I am running a small carpentry shop, I need my grinders, I need my, my, my a generator, I need um, my, 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 my small machines like my drilling machines, my, uh, my routers, my chainsaws, my... my uh, table source, you can actually see that those items might cost less than 5,000 US dollars, but I am required to pay duty. Even though I am going to create two, three, four, five jobs, I am required to pay duty, which means my business as a young as a young person is being sabotaged by the government itself because they are promoting people with capital already, people with um, muscles already. These are the people who are being um, promoted. So you can actually see that the government has failed to cater for young people, to, fail, to cater for small businesses who just want something which is costing 5,000 US dollars. We are running businesses, but we cannot get um, tax holidays. We cannot get duty-free uh, rebates on, on, on our machinery. So you can actually see that um, that is the problem. Let's get into the transport sector. I want to buy Macombi and Why is the government failing to give uh, the, the people who want to do commercial uh, transport issues the, um, uh, business? Why are they failing to, to, to give them um, duty-free rebates or uh, to, to, to cut that duty they, they, they have to pay? So you can actually see that the government does not prioritize investment. All they prioritize is to collect more money and more money and more money from the citizens, but they don't want to create a, 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 an environment where we can invest um, easily. So if I can buy a combi from, from, from Japan at three, uh, and it can reach Zimbabwe at 3,000 US dollars, you will see that I will have to pay duty and all other costs and the amount will be around 7,000. So 4,000 will just go to the government. 4,000 US dollars will just go to the government for doing nothing. 
So you, you have seen that the government has failed to promote the businesses. So if you want to solve the, the, the transport crisis in Zimbabwe, allow us to import combis at $3,000. Then you will see uh, from 10000 I will import three combis. And they will get into the market and they will begin to pay taxes. So the government is, is failing to obtain or to get taxes from the transport business or the, from the transport sector because they are failing to open up that sector. If they open up that, that sector, they are going to, 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 number one, collect vehicle license fees. They are going, number two, to collect my taxes from those companies. So you can actually see that there is an issue of policy and there is an issue of um, uh, uh, regulation which is lacking. It's because we have people who doesn't understand how these things should work. They seem to be educated, but they don't understand how the systems of developing countries work. You cannot apply a system which works in America. You cannot apply it in Zimbabwe. Why? We are on different levels. Economically, we are on different levels. So you can actually see that that is a, a very huge problem, a very big problem. So uh, I think I have um, uh, exhausted a lot of issues on that issue of, of capital. That is dysfunctional banks. Secondly, dysfunctional policies. That is both fiscal policy and monetary policies. So this makes us uh, go to, 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 to another very important issue, which is labor. And on this issue, we are going to, to, to make sure that we explore it uh, carefully because it affects a lot of issues. And the president himself and the government, um, and this government, have failed to, to make sure that um, the issue to do with labor is addressed accordingly. Because the function of labor is to, we are saying, um, before we talk about um, labor productivity, um, I think that, um, Okay, we are saying the issue to do with labor, I am giving an input as a worker. I am giving an input. I am employed and I am giving an input. The reason why I am leaving home is to go and give an input. And that input must contribute to the total profit area of the business or total production of the business. So if it is not the business, it should be the government as an entirety. So how does the labor policies in the nation of Zimbabwe influence that economy? Number one, we need to understand that before we go to the companies or to private businesses, the government itself, they have workers who work for the government. And these are the people who are working to make sure that there is um, the, the, poly, the government policy is implemented. These are the people who are after the implementation of government policies. And how are they addressing this issue when the government employees themselves are earning peanuts? So the concept is so easy. The more I get, the more I, I, I'm willing to, give, to, to, to put more effort. So if I'm told to run five kilometers and there is a benefit or there is a reward which makes me happy, I am going to run because I want to get that reward. But if there is no reward, I'm not willing to run. I'm not willing to spend much time doing something without a reward. So it means that if I just need to survive, to pay rent, to buy food, I'll just do something so that at the end of the day, I'll just buy food, I'll just pay rent. But if I can earn further than that, I am willing to put 100% effort. So this is the reason why you're seeing government employees, they go to work. They work from tea time, from tea time, from tea time, perfumes. From tea time, Vakumania, Vachitang, some perfumes, Vakumania, Chiranama, Eranza, Emunumu Tau. They are now running their own errands in Tau the whole day. 
they just work for a few hours. They leave the skeleton people in the office and the rest of them, they begin to run their own errors. Secondly, this is the reason why you see the government employees being corrupt. It's because they want to try to make ends meet. They can't afford, afford housing. They can't afford to buy themselves cars. They can't afford to send their kids to school. So to bridge the gap, they have to, 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 to implement corrupt activities. So they ask for bribes. You see how it went. And that is affecting the government because the government is losing revenue. The government is losing hours of productivity. So labor productivity is the total volume out of output measured in terms of GDP produced per unit of labor, measured in terms of the number, uh, in terms of the number of employed persons or hours worked during the given period of time. So we are saying the total volume of output and our government has failed to account for that. The government has failed to come with a comprehensive report of the number of persons employed by the government compared to the, productive, the productivity of the, that government. That is the reason why you see when one end of my passport, one of the square of the queue. How? Why is it when one of the square of the queue, the box in why is it people are failing to, to, to get IDs in time? It is printed by a machine. Everything is just being captured on a, on a computer. You have a certificate recomputerized already in the system. So if you want to get an ID, you just go with your physical birth certificate. And you just go on a fingerprint process. Fingerprint process is going to through a machine. And the information young is already in the computer system, and the, the IED number is already there. So, which means uh, what is important is number one to check my fingerprints, and number two to capture my picture. And that is done using a, a single machine. So, why is it that it is taking time to issue IDs to people? It means there is no productivity at all. People are on go slow, and the government has failed to answer those questions. This reflects government failure. In the present, Emerson Mungawa, as the government leader, has failed. Because the cues are an indication of failure. Cues are an indication of failure. Because if you go to a private um, business, Pavarku maximizer issue to do with profits, you will see Kuti Van, Vanoto Bisu, Marukuti Van, Vanina Pita Q. Why are we going to have a national security issue? People, so people are penalized, but our government is on course slow. Nothing is working, and the same is now applying to the private sector, especially to the banking sector. Massive corruption is now uh, taken uh, a, a lead in everything which is happening, and that reflects government failure. That reflects an inability of the government to make sure that they mobilize and distribute resources and they provide the leadership qualities and they provide the regulation proper regulation and um, uh, distribution of goods services and um, uh, so forth so uh, you can actually see that uh, low salaries they lead to demotivation they lead to less productivity they lead to uh, corruption sabotage and strikes so you can actually see the sequence. Le lower salary is equal to demotivation, is equal to less productivity, is equal to corruption, is equal to sabotage and strike. So that does not need a Sangoma to come to, or to visit you. That just needs common sense. That just needs form four comments. Zloti Batsira. Form four comments. But um, they have failed. So you can actually see that uh, these issues uh, are very simple issues. Form 4, Form 4 chat, these issues we are talking about. Just understanding these things 
If you understand these things, you would say that a lot of um, uh, dealing with a lot of issues is going to be very easy. So you can actually see that um, the last uh, aspect we want to talk about, which is very important, is to do with entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship is um, one of the key issues which are very important because uh, entrepreneurship is the ability and readiness to develop, organize, and run a business enterprise along with any of um, its uncertainties, uh, uncertainties uh, needs in order um, in order to make a profit. That is entrepreneurship. So we are talking about. Uh, making it possible for people to, 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 to get into business, making it possible for people to start businesses. And in Zimbabwe, you have to go to Harare for you to register a company. And that is a barrier to in the entrepreneurship. Why? People are trading informally in the nation of Zimbabwe. The majority of the people we have, they are trading informally. Not because they don't want to formalize but it's because you have to go to Harare. If you don't want to go to Harare, you have to pay agents who will take the papers to Harare, but for a fee. So $100 to register a company is needed. I have to pay $100 for me to register a company. And what is the government benefiting? They are taking less than $30. The government is not taking less than, I don't believe that they're taking more than $50. It's around $35, Marie put over by the government for company registration. And the rest is being taken by an agent. So $100 can fund a tax shop. $100 can fund a tax shop. With $100. So nobody is willing to fork out $100 just for company registration and formalities to run a tax shop or to run a very small business. So the government should come up with a policy to make sure that all sole traders are registered and they are paying taxes. Those taxes should not, should not be exorbitant. They must be reasonable taxes, but they must come up with an idea to make sure that every sole trader is registered, is a formally trading. That is key number one. That is how they can begin to, 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 to develop policies to say, we have people who are running businesses and these are the numbers we have. How can we best assist them for, to, for them to grow? Because we are comparing data you have to say, these businesses have been running for a very long time, but there is no expansion. They've been running the sole traders for a very long time. There is no expansion. Let's investigate and see what is causing them not to expand. Then you make inquiries. Then you bring my policies and later put my business. Why atanke kukura? That is how you 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 make entrepreneurship begin to run or begin to, to, to develop. But they failed to, do, uh, to, to, to deal with that. We have seen the president going to Davos. We have seen the president going to, to, to various countries, um, quoting investors. We have seen very beautiful headlines in the Herald, in the state newspapers, um, headlines at the SBC TV and at the radio stations. Those are very sweet headlines. Zimbabwe president is uh, quoting investors was one of my investors like it said, why are you running for foreign investors when your own investors Munikamako, are not included they are not empowered company registration process is not so easy there is a massive corruption at the registry, company registry why are you not digitalizing the issue to do with company registration why are you not digitalizing the issue of Tax compliance issues and tax payment issues. In Zimbabwe, is a reason I tax record in. I cannot obtain a tax record. I cannot apply for that easily. There are other countries where if you want to, to make some international payments, they want a tax record. But I cannot apply that because it's not available online and I have to travel to Harare. So that is preventing people to even submit marriage this is the one one and pay the little taxes they can pay. And that is costing the government so much. It's because of thinking. 
we don't have people who are thinking they are busy running after investors, not busy running after uh, good policies, because good policies brings investors. And the charity begins at home. You begin by making sure that your own people are investing. You begin by making sure that your own people are included in the running of the economy. And if you include your own people, it means that the money which is being generated will not go outside of Zimbabwe, it will remain in Zimbabwe. Because there is no way, in, in, as a small entrepreneur, there is no way I will think of buying a house in Dubai. There is no way I will, I will think of buying a house in South Africa. I want to begin by making sure that I have a stable life and in, in, in business here in Zimbabwe, which means I'm not going to splash money. So the government has failed to, 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 to see the impact of small and medium enterprises. This is the reason why we have a, a dormant um, and useless ministry, which is doing nothing to, 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 to make sure that the small and uh, uh, small and medium enterprises are empowered uh, and made to progress. So the issue to do with carbon registration, we have exploited it, and I believe that um, we have exhausted it. The issue to do with capital, I think we have exploited it and we have exhausted it um, as well. Our business, our banks, they are failing to give us capital. Instead, what they are doing is that they say, bring um, your, your, your business plan, and at the end of the day, you will see your business plan being implemented by another person who does have financial muscle. And how is that working? There is massive corruption where these banks, which are being called my youth banks, my women's banks, you go and submit your business plan, and that business plan is sold to somebody else, and that person profiteers. I think the Rwangasana plan actually work around that plan. And the person, the originator of the idea, is left stranded and with nothing. So you can actually see that. Um, uh, President Emerson Nangagwa, based on these things, we can basically say uh, he has failed. Because as I mentioned earlier, the president is the head of, uh, head of state and is therefore uh, mandated to establish an economic system. That economic system should organize and distribute available resources, that is goods and services, to all corners of Zimbabwe. And this is system. Is, is the government. And its functions are to regulate the factors of production, which are land, labor, um, entrepreneurship, and um, as well as capital. And I believe that um, we have, uh, in short, tried to, 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 to elaborate these issues. So we have, um, um, yeah. I have tried to exhaust these issues. So another issue on entrepreneurship I wanted to raise is that it is very difficult for you to obtain a miners license, mining license. Only foreigners does have much access to, to, to mining licenses. And those who are politically connected. If you are not politically connected, it's very difficult for you to obtain a mining license. If you, um, I don't know, uh, the issue to do with um, Broadcasting, it is not easy in Zimbabwe to have a broadcasting license. That is the reason why you see we only have one television channel, and the majority of them they are still owned. I don't know if we have any private television uh, network in the nation of Zimbabwe. I don't, I, I don't think we have any, because the last time I checked, Pangapani had the they complain on another paper, and you go change the card, you go be a new mama licenses and so forth. So these are the issues we are saying. How can we uh, value entrepreneurship? Because entrepreneurship, is, we, we, we have talked about the ability and readiness to develop, organize, and run a business enterprise. And if I want to run a media business enterprise, I must be ready, I must, I must have an ability that the government is preventing me. So it is an issue to do with policy. It is an issue to do with regulation. And they are over-regulating just because they want to, to make sure that they, they, they term the, the, the content, they control content which goes out to the people. 
but at the same time, that is affecting the economy, that is harmful to the economy itself. So um, I, I believe uh, and think that uh, uh, I have exhausted that. If you want to, 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 to uh, venture into fuel industry, energy industry, the requirements um, are, are, are not so easy in the nation of Zimbabwe. It's not so easy to, to get into those sectors. So Tim Zimbabwe, I believe that uh, I've exhausted um, how the president and his government have failed to, to make sure that they utilize the factors of production and they investigate and see how best can they apply those factors of production in making sure that Zimbabwe becomes productive, in making sure that Zimbabwe uh, becomes working again. So I'm going to, to, to read a few comments here before we end this platform and the money degree um Richie said i don't know um are you okay marufu could um issue a degree irugu ya yopinda papi and na ben mtunzi zvine basa raise a degree okay uh personally really uh, i'm studying a banking and finance i'm still a student uh, web banking and finance and uh, certain the um, in the pizza. my course uh, i'm doing banking and finance uh, i hope you are answered um comma are okay maruf okay uh, okay uh, uh, uh and is that relevant though and is just a question yeah <laughs> Okay. And the Vanaja Kaipa Kuta or Chokwadi is true, brother. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I don't know if you have any question. Um, in a, can you please write any question irrelevant to the issue we're discussing? Because we are saying um, the factors of production are key. To, to, to a functional economy. Without the factors of production, we cannot have a, a functional economy. And we need a government which is ready to make sure that they deal with the issues to do with the factors of production. Because uh, we are saying uh, in the economy, uh, uh, in, in economic factors of production are the resources people use to produce goods and services. Okay, they are the building blocks of the economy. The four categories are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. That is a basic de definition. Yeah, factors of production. So we are saying um, these are the resources people use to produce goods, services, and they are the building blocks of the economy. These are the fundamental key issues to have a, a sustainable economy, a functional economy. So you can actually see that um, if they failed to, 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 to understand the basic things as a government, it means we are going no. This is the reason why we say we need a government, um, a new government, which is going to understand these basic things. Because by understanding these basic uh, things and how they work, by investigating uh, how best they, they work in the nation, it makes it easy for, 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 for the economy to, to, to function. So this is the reason why I, see, I say, you will see that um, uh, President Nelson Chamisa Wakapinda, it won't take six months. Because if you see or if you listen to him speak, you understand that um, his ideas, they are genuine. His ideas, they address key fundamental issues. And, um, uh, does Zimbabwe need capitalism or socialism? Okay, at this juncture, we need to understand that um, capitalism, we, uh, Chi, Capitalism, we are talking about in a, an issue where business travel, 
Apana much government interference, which means at this juncture, the redistribution of wealth is difficult because capitalism does not talk about redistribution of wealth. There is no an aspect of redistributing wealth from those with higher incomes to those with lower incomes. There is no that aspect in, in uh, capitalism. And I don't believe that um, that can work in the nation of Zimbabwe at this juncture because of the levels of poverty we have, the inequalities we already have at this moment. We will create wider inequalities where those with money, they will continue to make more money and there will be difficulties to enter into the market because we need the government to make sure that they reduce monopoly. And when they reduce monopoly, the barriers to entry are also reduced. And if we are to deal with um, the issue of socialism, I, I don't know how best it can work in the nation of Zimbabwe. I believe that we need a, a mixed a sort of economy in the nation of, this, of Zimbabwe at this juncture. Because so socialism itself, I don't know how we can, we can um, uh, adopt it or we can make it uh, be used in the nation of Zimbabwe. Maybe we need other people to come and justify their points, but I believe that we need to have sort of a mixed uh, kind of economy in the nation of Zimbabwe where there is robust government intervention in terms of regulation, in terms of redistribution of the resources from the region of higher concentration to the uh, regions of lower concentration. That is from those um, who are rich to those who are poor. That is through massive taxation to those who are very rich. But in Zimbabwe, we have, we have seen that um, those who are very rich, they are being given tax holidays. That is what is happening. Instead of giving tax in them, they are being given tax holidays. And the poor are being taxed. Those without money are heavily taxed. And those with money are, are being are given rebates, are being given tax holidays. And I don't know how they are applying the, the, their, their, the, their economies there because they claim to be partly socialist, uh, so, socialist or pro socialist. But I don't know how they, they run socialism um, concepts when they are giving tax holidays to the, to, the, to the rich instead of the poor. So, okay, and uh, yes, thanks, I hope uh, I didn't offend anyone. Yes, you didn't offend anyone, Mukoma um, uh, area. Okay, Hans, how do we solve the, the current issue? The current issue, Mukoma, Mukoma, um, Mukoma area. Uh, basically, we need to understand what went wrong. Because Pakawya GNU, I always say, Let's go to, 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 to the foundation of things. Pakao ya GNU takanga tine currency ya inzi ZWD, Zimbabwe dollar. Yanga ya roa ne haipa inflation, yako in trillions and pamelo quadrillions. To an extent ya kuti wanga wako ya nda kuno, kuno chenga chingwa ne bara. So, pakazo wita USD in 2009, Vanu wakanzi endai muno varama accounts amaga amina Uro wakanzi just abandon those accounts And open new accounts People had to open new US dollar accounts In 2009 I remember my father opening a new US dollar account Vanu wane bank account dawe ya vana yukidara But uh, he opened a new bank account That is in 2009 and he started depositing U.S. dollars in that bank account. He started receiving his monies in U.S. dollars in that account, new account. And the old account was abolished and was made dysfunctional. So here's the problem. Fast forward to after GNU, they introduced the bond. And they say the bond here is one to one. Tari unzranya change. That is according to the government. Mangujiga himself came and said, Tanguri unzranya ye kutiva nwa gwone kuchinja marine vita say, but is representing your real money in the bank. That is the bond. 
But we moved on from this bond to a point where my US dollars are going to to one of the US. And we moved to a certain point where in 2019, Mutuli came and said, uh, to introduce a ZWL. They have did the ZWD in 2008, prior to 2009, that ZWD, they abandoned it. They now uh, took over the work with ZWL. And ZWL, how does it function? That ZWD, now ZWL. And does that make sense? But the problem is not on ZWD or, or, or on ZWL. The problem is this is ZWL is going to sit on an account which was opened in 2009 as a US dollar account. You, you understand? In 2009, we opened US dollar accounts. And wherever you open a, 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 an account in Zimbabwe, you will pay in US dollar. Wakaba, there are five dollars. You could account yako. That is the fact. So you paid five dollars to open an account. And in 2019, Mutuli Mube just came and said that same account Wakaba, there are in US dollars is now a Zimbabwean dollar account. And he said, Maria, is the one is to one. You see how they introduced the same dollar. That is where the problem lies. So the president might uh, try by all means to run away from the reality. The reality is that they destroyed the economy with their own hands. When they introduced the Zimbabwe dollar in 2019, when they said it's no longer one is to one in 2019, that's how they began destroying the Zimbabwe dollar. So what they were supposed to do was to instruct the people to say, Team Zimbabwe, with effect from 1 February 2019, you are supposed to have Zim dollar accounts. And they have done that with the civil servants right now. Civil servants have a Zim dollar account, have a Nostro account. So Nostro account, we are just saying, Imari Irukupinda foreign currency, Irukupinda my US dollars. That is a Nostro account. And we had the Nostro accounts from 2009. So they were supposed to introduce a Zimbabwean dollar account. It is separate, but in, in they, they introduced a Nostro. Uh, they 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 uh, abolished the uh, nostro account and 